Hi, uh, my name is Jimmy Califardis. Um, I'm 54 years old, and I would just like to share uh, my experience with chronic uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, back in back in 2001, when I was 34 years old, 20 years ago, um, I was a fairly fit young fellow. I was playing a high level sport every weekend, and I was going to gym every second weekend. I'd go for a run every second day as well. So I was a fairly young, uh, fit young fellow. And what happened was, all of a sudden, out of, out of the blue, my left foot, um, it just started hurting. I mean, I, it was excruciating. I, I couldn't actually put any weight on it. And um, I didn't know. I thought I maybe hurt it when I was playing sport on the weekend. So I went to a, uh, I went to a local doctor, and he, he, um, he suggested I go and see a uh, podiatrist. And we had a bit of a look at it, and no one could actually find out what was wrong with it. We actually ended up putting in plaster for a while to see how it would go, but... Um, to no avail. So, and that so, so put me down a path for the next path for the next twelve months of just seeing different specialists and doctors, trying to find out what was wrong with me. So, but through the process of elimination, they concluded that I must have rheumatoid arthritis. So they suggested I, I see a specialist, one of the pe best specialists I understand in Victoria, in Melbourne. So I went and seen him, and I, at that point, I had a very sore foot. I was on crutches for twelve months. But um, uh, 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 my general health was pretty good, but I had a sore foot. And as soon as I, as soon as I met this uh, rheumatologist, he put me on some medication. And I, I can't remember all the medication, but one I remember was like methotrexate. And, but I had several different medications they put me on. But, uh, but none, of the, none of the medication would actually help me. Uh, and I remember talking to the specialist the first day, and I, what stuck in my mind, he said, uh, I said, how did I get this? And he said, Jimmy, I don't know. I said, um, how do I get rid of it? How, how do we get rid of it? And he said, we can't. You have to treat it with medication. You can never get rid of this thing. So that's stuck in my head. So so for the next two years, it was just on a, a, a downward spiral um, of my health deteriorated rapidly. Um, my pain increased rapidly. And I was in a point where I could not sleep at all. And people who who, who get, get this, uh, this condition like me know what I'm talking about. I mean, you cannot sleep. It's just through pure exhaustion you actually you 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 pass out and um i was like that and i was surprised how i function you know how it survived with no sleep and uh and with this pain and and now the uh um relief i'd get actually was with uh high uh strong uh painkillers you know so this went for about uh two years so back in so about 2003 um i, I had a bit of an argument with the rheumatologist i said look mate i'm not getting better and it came to a point where we had a bit of a heated discussion and he said, look, Jimmy, um, he, he, look, I, I can't help you. He said, uh, I, I can actually treat people with, uh, I can stop their pain. I cannot stop your pain. And the only thing you can do is actually um, take some painkillers and uh, learn to live with it. You've got to learn to live with your condition, Jimmy. You have to accept it. That's your problem. Well, I didn't accept that. And I walked out and I said, mate, do not ever call me again. And I refused to take any medication. I went home and I threw all the medication out. Um, and I said to my wife, and she was very upset with me. I had a young family at the time, and I said, "Look, just give me painkillers, and and that's it. I'm not I'm not going to see another doctor. I, if he's the best that I can see, I've got I've got bloody no hope." So I, I gave up. I, I didn't think I was actually going to get better. So I thought I'd just see what happens, and I would just take painkillers. Was not sleeping. It's extreme pain. A friend of mine saw me and said, um, out of the blue, probably about a month later, and said, "Jimmy, you know," and I was sick and seeing doctors at the time. He said, "Look, I." I I spoke to a friend of mine and he'd seen a doctor in Melbourne and he said, this doctor actually treated someone, had a condition like yours and he helped this, he helped his mother. Reluctantly, I went and seen, his name was Dr. Kemp. And, um, and I remember the first meeting when I saw him, first thing he said to me was, Jim, I think I know what's wrong with you. He goes, we're going to run some blood tests and we'll see what happens first. So um, I got some blood tests and he came back and he, and he asked me to go and see him. And I still remember this. He said, Jimmy, I know what's wrong with you. Um, he said, this and this, you got, you got a, uh, you got a blood infection and that's why your immune system is acting this way and we can fix you. So there's two contrasts. He can help me. He knows what's wrong with me and he can tell me how, how he can fix me. So that was the first thing that, that I, it really stuck in my mind. And with the reluctance of my wife and family, um, I did not see the rheumatologist and I started getting treated, uh, by Dr. Kemp. So the thing was, um, Dr. Kemp from then, um, and forgive me, I just because I, I forget the the terms and everything. But um, he started treating me uh, with 
um, intravenously uh, Dallas and C with rotating course of tetracyclines and ruloid and sopoxin. So apologize if I don't get, get it right. So his philosophy was simple. He would say, Jimmy, let's treat the condition. Let's, let's see what's wrong. Let's switch off the tap of, of, this condi- of, of what is causing this problem and help your immune system where he explained to me that rheumatologists give you medication which suppress your immune system, treat the symptoms, stop the pain, but don't fix the problem. So his philosophy was let's fix the problem and, and let's, let's get better. And um, so we, we, we worked with Dr. Kemp from 2004 and for about 12 months, I, I, like for about a few months, six months, I never seen much change. And, and it, was, it was disappointing. Uh, like it was, you know, I was uh, getting a little bit depressed. And, uh, but I stuck at it. I stuck at it hard. And, um, and we, we, started getting, we started getting better. Um, like I was getting, and no word of a lie, people with my condition will understand this, the pain was 10 out of 10. Um, I could not sleep. It was relentless. It was on and on. You know, I could not function, could not dress. My wife had to help me share. I had to read, had to help me dress. I couldn't lather soap, couldn't brush my teeth. And um, and I started getting, and, and I, I did experience some relief in pain, about seven out of 10 and six out of 10 and five out of 10, a few hours in a week. And that sort of, and then that sort of started the process of, of actually getting better to a point where I was in full remission. So, and that took about 12 months to 18 months. But the pain and the damage done, persevering with uh, with the rheumatologist did a lot of damage to my body. I had to, after, uh, I remember talking to Dr. Kemp, I said, Mark, I can hear my hips are making the noises and my knee doesn't feel the best. And there's a lot of movement. He said, we'll deal with that issue later on. You're on fire. So let's patch you out. Let's get the fight, stop, stop you from being on fire and then we'll fix the joints. And I had to, unfortunately, through the process the last couple of years, had to, uh, after the, uh, uh, after that event, I had to replace both my hips, and I got another fifteen years out of my knee. But one thing I'll say, um, glad to say, and this is the one thing that I got out of this was, I, uh, I was told what my problem was, um, and that's why I had that condition. So I understood that. That's why I, 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 I supported the the treatment. And the second thing, he gave me hope that he can get me better. And I'm glad to say I've been in remission for like sixteen years or whatever it is, and. I'm not taking any medication. Um, I'm looking after myself. I'm not running. I, I want to take care of my hips, my new hips. But I go to the gym every second day. I'm tr- I'm walking and I'm functioning. I'm going to work every day and I'm around. You know, I'm sleeping really good. And um, and I've got no doubt that without this treatment from Dr. Kemp, um, I wouldn't be here today. I'll tell you that now. There's no way. And I feel sorry for all the people that get uh, treated from these other doctors they give these people no hope. And when they're in so much pain and they can't fix it, and they put their hands up and, and they just say, I'll take some Panadol. I mean, I was taking medication 10 times stronger than medic, uh, than Panadol. And I, I lost my memory, I think, for about 12 months after that because of the, the uh, high doses of medication I was taking, painkillers. So for, for whoever's listening to this, I wish you all the best. I'll tell you, there's hope. Um, if, you treat, if you find the right doctor that treats you with um with what Dr. Kemp has done, um uh, there's definitely hope there. I, I'm I tell you now, I'm living testimony. I had people come and see me after I got better. Friends of mine had seen me the two or three years. Said Jimmy, I honestly thought you were a goner. I'm surprised you made it back. So I disappoint a lot of my enemies. <laughs> my family's uh, people who love me are very happy, but um I surprised myself. To be honest, because I, I didn't think because I, I just uh, believed in what was said made sense. What Dr. Kemp was telling me. And um, I stuck at it and I got better. So f- so whoever listens to this, hopefully this helps you and I wish you guys all the best. Thank you.